Much better. Namaste. Shalom everyone. I'm super excited because today I'm going to finally watch the movie that I've been waiting to watch for so long, you know, when it came out, The Kashmir Files. Um, this is this video is going to be about an Israeli reacting to The Kashmir Files. So we are right now approaching the theater. Um, I've never sat at a theater for three hours. So I'm here with uh, Shai, the owner of this uh, movie theater. And I just have to say, first of all, thank you. And thanks to uh, Vivek, the film director, for introducing. Thanks for Z also, who bring, gave me the movie for release and the movie in Israel. Yeah, yeah. Shai, you are an Indian Jew. Yes, I'm an Indian Jew. I'm a second generation of distributing Bollywood films in Israel. I'm born in Israel, but I can speak Hindi and Marathi. And wow. I watch uh, more than 7,500 Indian films. I have the biggest collection of Bollywood films in the world, I think. Wow. And I'm running Bollywood channels around the world also. And he knows one of my uh, favorite actors, Shah Rukh Khan. Shah Rukh Khan, yeah. Yeah, that, that's my favorite Bollywood uh, movie. Kuchi Kuchi Otai. But anyways, we're going to watch The Kashmir Files and I'll see you guys after the movie. So uh, thank Enjoy. you for hosting us. Wow, I finished watching the movie. I have no words. I want to review this movie from my two hats, being Israeli and being Jewish. And at the end, I want to say what I learned from the movie for the future of India. First of all, my heart was broken, especially from that last scene, because this is exactly what the Nazis did to my people. Shooting people into mass graves, stripping them of their identities and murdering them only because of who they were and believed in. As a Jew, I feel like this is my responsibility to talk about what's happening in Kashmir and the genocide of Hindus in the hands of radical Islamists. Because we had gone through the Holocaust. And when we say never again, it's not just about the Holocaust. Never again to me is of course making sure that there will never be another Holocaust. But it is also preventing and standing up to genocides and annihilations of other nations. Because there is no blood that worths more than the other. We are all humans. Blood is blood. And when it is being shed, it is heartbreaking and needs to stop immediately. Sadly, the world is not talking enough about the genocide of Hindus in Kashmir. You know? And therefore, the Kashmir Files movie is so, so important for every human being. We the Jews had the exodus from Egypt. The Hindus had the exodus from Kashmir. And if I want to learn more about the exodus from Kashmir and go to Wikipedia, for example, the numbers are lying on the internet. Maybe there is not enough evidence. I don't know, but it is shameful to claim that only a few dozens were murdered by radical Islamists because the numbers are much higher. This would be spitting in the faces of the families of the victims. And the liberal leftists do what they know best. They listen to the story of the oppressor that pretends to be the victim, in this case, the radical Islamist Pakistanis. Now, how do I know that? <laughs> because we Israelis have the same problem. India is dealing with Pakistan. Israel is dealing with the Palestinians. Both India and Israel defend their people and lands from terrorists. And yet, somehow, the media always takes the side of the perpetrators, be it Pakistani terrorists, or Palestinian terrorists. Both Pakistan and the Palestinians share in common their desire to grab lands that are not theirs. Look, both history and present prove that Kashmir was an integral part of India. It is India, whether they like it or not. And the Palestinians are doing the same exact thing. They are claiming that Judea and Samaria, also known as West Bank, is Palestine, completely ignoring history and present. The Palestinians are settling in cities that used to be capitals of the Kingdom of Israel, like Nablus and Samaria, long before the name Palestine even existed. These, these are cities with historical synagogues or historical Jewish sites, and they are erasing that and claiming that it was theirs all along. They are occupying Jewish lands, and Pakistanis are occupying Indian lands. 
How are they doing that? With the same method. Terrorism. And because Israel and India are strong powers, the media automatically assumes that we are the aggressors and when we defend ourselves and fight back, they give a biased report that doesn't include why our military is there in the first place. Now, look, you don't have to be genius to understand that there is a radical Islamist problem in Kashmir. Just look at who they are friends with, who they are supporting. Every year, they protest against Israel and call for the destruction of the Jewish nation while holding photos of the supreme leader of Iran that is responsible for oppressing millions of Iranians. And they don't talk about that. In their protests, they show nothing but anger and jealousy. Now, I want to talk about the future of India. Because while this story is tragic and includes the suffering of many Hindus, we need to look forward and secure the future of India. India needs to bring more people to settle in Kashmir by giving them benefits. Look, it's not similar or comparable, but look how China encourages people to migrate to Tibet with social benefits and whatnot to make their border tougher. Because when one part of India is suffering, all of India is suffering. And I'm very happy that the Modi administration is working to make things right. They revoked Article 370 and made the lives of Indian nationals safer in Kashmir because the only way to deal with radicals is not through negotiations. They don't understand this language. They will only try to grab more land. The only way, the only way is with an iron fist. If they attack you, attack in the strongest means possible. The only way to secure the future of India is to bring the radical enemies on their knees. And I'm not even an Indian national. But being an Israeli Jew who served in the military and knows what it's like to fight, that's the only way, unfortunately. Of course, I wish that we didn't have to fight and that we didn't have to have an army, but we have, you know, we have this saying in Hebrew that if our enemies lay down their weapons, there will be peace. But if we lay down our weapons, there will be no Israel. Also, another thing that stood out to me in uh, the movie was when the radicals chanted Azadi, independence, while knowingly or unknowingly supported the massacre of Hindus. It is the same thing like our neighbors here chant Free Palestine and encourage terrorist attacks on Jews. Because Free Palestine is short for from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Meaning that they want to destroy the state of Israel from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea and build a Palestinian state on the top of it. And look, they are not happy that we are not letting them do that. Same thing with India. These radical Islamists are not happy that India is not letting them occupy its own lands. The bond between Israel and India is unbreakable. And while many countries have relations because of interests, which is totally fine, but I think that our alliance is more than just common interests. It is the true friendship between Indians and Israelis. The understanding that we share common problems that need common solutions. We are a strong family and we are stronger together. I stand with my Indian brothers and sisters and I see you as my family. May we see peace in Kashmir. And I hope to visit Kashmir and see flags of India waving in every corner that I go to. Because the flag of India represents security and peace in Kashmir.